Well, our game time. Hello. Welcome, everybody, to episode number five. We're going to be joined by Lockie Weller a little bit later in the show, but for now, you're stuck with us. I am the Moose. I am the Ponch. And as per usual, we've got EJ up in this bitch. Up in this big old bitch titties. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, start us off with EJ's kids. Talk me through it, big boy. All right. Uh, how's my driving t-shirt? How's my driving t-shirt? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Yeah, long sleeve wife beater underneath. Big coat. Uh, the the leather was it leather this week? No, sorry. No, it was what, what kind of material? Like a cotton. Cotton material. Cotton jacket. Big coat, yeah, and uh, corduroy pants. Yeah, that's my favorite actually. The corduroy pants are looking juicy, and the beanie on top. And the docks, yeah. docks, which we always have. That's a standard for the, the audacity kit. of the man to be going blue. Blue beanie, green pants. They say blue and green should never be seen unless it's in the washing machine. So, but he pulls it off. <laughs> <laughs> Moosey with a huge one. Now, we start off the show, we start off last week with a bit of a morale booster and we got a lot of good feedback. So, we found another clip this week. Um, the pubs have returned and everyone's pretty excited. <laughs> and I think this absolute rooster has loved it more than anyone. So, give the moose, give it a, give it a go. The pubs are back. He's excited. <laughs> so for those of you who, who haven't been able to watch that, this bloke has jumped up on the bar, <laughs> run the full length of the bar and dived into a crowd. Stage dive. dive. Gracefully. So if you if you can't see that, then go to our YouTube and have a look. All we'll posted on our Instagram as well. So get around it. How's a little mar- 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 morale booster? <laughs> morale booster. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. We, we struggle with words sometimes. It was, it was a big weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so story time Now I've got this this week Go I've got, I've got a good story for us So I travelled around South America For uh, Six weeks Over December and January And it was a phenomenal trip yep. Loved it But this story isn't about The trip It's when I got home And um, as you know my, I'm best, my best One of my best mates is Jordan Degoe, right? Yes And we lived together for a few For two years Two years, yeah And I was I hadn't seen him since I'd been back I'd been back for about a week Hadn't caught up with him yet. And I'm coming out onto the Nepean Highway. I'm turning out onto the Nepean Highway. And I look behind me and there's a traffic light where I am. And then there's a traffic light 50 meters back. And I look behind me and I see a bunch of try-hard bikey looking folks <laughs> on, their, on their Harley Davidsons. And we know that Geordie rides, rides his Harley Davidson. And yeah. he's got a bunch of try-hard little rich boy Brighton friends who try and act like bikies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I'm thinking, all right, here we go. I look and I look back, and it just looks exactly like him. Like he he's leaning back, just like Geordie does, and he like starts whispering to his mate there. Um, and I'm like, okay, I know what's going on here. He's recognised my car, and he's going to get those guys to drive up next to me and try and intimidate yeah. me, try and scare me. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm one step ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. Traffic light goes green and as I start driving off, I put my hand out of the car and I start waving them forward, <laughs> yelling out, yeah, come on, boys, come on, yeah. You get-. <laughs> and I was giving it all that yeah. and then some. And as they get closer to me, I start to realise it's not Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's a real, it's a real bikey gang. <laughs> You've been razzing these guys up with confidence that you're just like, ah, stuff it. I know what's going on here. And they turned out to be the real deal. What what happened? And I sank into my seat. And as they got closer to me, they just like rode past me and gave me the dirtiest look in my window. But they must have seen that I was a strapping rooster and didn't mess with me. (laughs) Mate, I would have been absolutely putting the nappies on because... I was booing myself. Yeah. I was absolutely booing myself. But thank God I didn't get like my... Side mirror punched in or something. <laughs> oh, mate, that was. And then I told Jordy, and he just he absolutely pissed himself about that story. But That's a ripper. It's a good little. Oh, oh, flag. Here we go. Up in the play. Let's not waste any time, Ponchy. Yeah, we're not messing about. All I want to know this week, and I think all everyone wants to know, is how the bloody hell did you manage to flood your one of your best friends' houses? Oh. <laughs> this is one of those ones that I was hoping would never come up. Like <laughs> genuinely. St- stresses me so i won't name names and i won't express anyone in the uh thing i'll just explain my wrongdoing 
So to set the scene, and it's funny enough that you mentioned um, Geordie. So he actually has a part in this story as well because we've come to see your fight night. Um, I haven't been around Melbourne for the last five years much. So um, basically, I've come to see you do your fight. Um, you've won. You've knocked the guy. You've broken his nose in round at the end of round two. You'd Thanks be for stoked. I'm pumping there. you Thanks up. Thanks for jacking that in it's there. It's the only time it'll ever happen. <laughs> and we've had a big night in the town. And Geordie was just getting me beers like... Beer after beer after beer after shot after shot. It got to about three o'clock in the morning, and I don't know what happened, but I was just I was kicked out of the Albion like munded <laughs> munded my guts up in the in the in the curb. And this lovely fa- family, while I've come down to stay in Melbourne because I was about to head back to Canada, said I could stay with them for a couple of weeks. So somehow I mustered up the address in my head because I had no idea. I've managed to get back to their place, and I've gone upstairs, and naturally. For anyone else, I don't know what you do when you get too pissed or too hungover or whatever. I I like to have a long shower and a sit down and, and a think about what I've done to myself. <laughs> really just figure it out. Just rare sex, your next move. Yeah. So I get in the shower and it just, I don't know, it refreshes me. So I sit there and I'm just laying down, um, just, just sitting down and kind of, you know, kind of got a bit too relaxed and fell asleep. Now, <laughs> what has happened is I've, I've sat on the, the drain pipe. And there was obviously not a second pipe uh, or drain pipe in the bathroom. So oh. I've sat on this thing. All I remember is just sitting in the shower. Next minute, I get a bang on the door. Oh, Locky, bang, bang, bang. I'm like, oh, yeah, I get up. I didn't even realize that the floor was, was flooded in the bathroom. I get up to tell me, I open the door and it's my friend's father. And he's like, mate, what's going on? I'm like, yeah, not much. And he's like, mate, you've, you've, you've flooded the house. I look down, I look down and there's water everywhere. And it, it was probably the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. This was probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. In that moment, I evaluated exactly what had gone wrong. And my reaction to it was just pass out, wake up in the morning and deal with it then because there's just nothing you can do right now. So the next morning, we we're supposed to go up to the lake to go like skiing for the day at like nine in the morning. It was midday and I'm like, oh shit. Like obviously we had a big night, not going to happen. And then I was like, wait a minute. Was, was that a dream or did I flood the house? And I woke up, I walked to the end of the bedroom and it was just a blotch of water. And I, they're like, I finally realized what I'd done. And for 10 minutes, I was pacing back and forth because I didn't want to go downstairs. And the only reason... Face why, the reality. Yeah, the only reason why I eventually did was because I'm like, you know what? In a hundred years of my life, this will be probably one of the most embarrassing things I have to face up to. I just got to go down there and accept it. And they were the most lovely people about it. That the was Gauchy so family's nice. props because I would have yeah. kicked your ass black and blue. If and that was everyone else said the same thing. They're like, mate, if it was anyone else, they probably would have wringed their neck, but they've just been the nicest family about it. And uh, yeah, I was so guilty. And that was one of the first nights of the two weeks I stayed there. And they were so polite about the whole time. they didn't kick you out. I am absolutely shocked like, about that. Yeah. So that was a really good stitch up, mate, because that one really, really hurts the yep. ticker. And there are plenty more from where they came from. But you're up next week, mate. So I'm, uh, I'm yeah. So I'm preparing I'll, myself. I will be coming back with a vengeance on you on that one. So you've got me deep. So... I'm, uh, I'm not looking forward to it, but what I am looking forward to is footy coming back. Yes, and we're we are we're all pumped. about it. And we're going to be doing predictions every week. So we're going to be doing tips and we're also going to be doing our, uh, our rogue predictions, which is like... Our golden rogie, which is what we're going to call it. Yep. We're going to be calling it the golden rogie. So it's just whatever we feel, you know, say, for example, we think that someone's going to have 30 and kick five goals. That's our golden rogie for the week. So yep. you get the gist. And then we're going to be having our absolute certainty. So whatever team we think is an absolute certainty to win, that'll be it. So, so without further ado, you uh, you read it through, and then I'll just say who we think's going to win. So sure. So Collingwood and Richmond. I've for gone. The first for, game. I've gone for the Mighty Tigers. I have gone. Collingwood. for the Maggies. Massive. I think that the Maggies are coming in hot this year. Massive. I really do. I think that they're very strong. Yeah. And the. I'm just backing them in. Yeah. Um, and also in this game is my golden rogie. Now, Hello. my golden rogie for this week is for, I originally said four goals, but Dugowie to kick five goals, but for the Tigers to win. And I'm going for Dugowie to kick that many goals because apparently in the practice match, he had about eight plus set shots during their scratch match. So 
feeling confident. We've pumped him to the gills in this whole uh, episode. So well, he- I'll give him another pump. I know him well. And when he's enjoying himself and when he's happy, I think you've just got to watch out. Yeah. And right now, he's whenever I speak to him about training, it's, yeah, loving it. Yeah. Loving training, enjoying myself. So yeah. be very careful. Also that he's paid us to give him that many uh, pump-ups yeah. in the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pays well. Geelong versus Hawthorne. Yeah, Geelong for sure. Um, they're playing at home. And I think there was a stat they've only lost four of the last 36 at home. So wow. I reckon they'll take the Hawks. I'm absolutely saying Geelong at the Cattery as well. And this is my golden rogi. I think the danger is going to have 25 and kick two goals. Massive. All right. Yep. So with the reduced quarters, I think that that's a big feat. Yeah. 25 and two goals. And uh, I think he'll play in the midfield, go forward a little bit. And I think he'll just be damaging. I think he's the kind of bloke that'll just be chomping at a bit to come back and play footy again. So Brisbane Lions free mail. Yes, I'm going for Brisbane, and this is my dead set certainty for the week. Wow. Yes. I Massive. feel they actually have I've only won one of the last four games, I think, because of the two final losses, and uh, I'm not too sure if they won round one. No, they lost against Hawthorne. Yeah, so they're not coming in with form, but I just think against Freo, they've had an extended break, dust the cobwebs off, so I'm that's my call for the the week, yeah. Wow. I I wouldn't have expected you to uh, to go for them there. Honestly, for me, I'm going Melbourne just because I think that Carlton, I can't really see them making any drastic improvements this year. I think they've made a few good little list changes. Eddie Betts will be a good inclusion. I think Patrick Cripps will have another big year. But for me, they haven't had that many guys transition into that sort of 24 to 26 range yeah. where they're going to start becoming actually A-grade players so. my only thought is just the back end of the year they improve with teague that's probably just where i'm going to pluck the smoky from i'm yeah. just hoping they have a good day yep and actually they did all right against richmond in round one so i can understand yeah. why um port adelaide versus adelaide uh going for port i think that's probably a pretty obvious one i don't think that's an obvious one I, th- I think that that's probably the 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 tightest game that there's going to be this whole round i'm predicting a very close game a really good one but i'm predicting port to get over the line well i just feel like obviously showdowns are always really tight but um well port's been on top of the ladder for eight weeks but you know that's really been one week um just who adelaide have lost through the off season i think that's the only reason why i thought you know port will probably come in and do it by five goals pretty comfortably fair enough Gold Coast versus West Coast. I'll pick West Coast this week. Um, yeah, once again, I think that's probably one of the more obvious ones again. I'm actually predicting uh, West Coast as well, but I'm predicting Gold Coast to come close, to come much closer than people think. Uh, I think that peop- that they'll turn a few heads with their performance this week. I think that Brandon Ellis will have a good game. I think that Lockie Weller, who's come on the podcast today, and Tuke Miller mm. are coming into sort of that 24 yeah. age and what I heard bracket. from, uh, they had their little scratch match over the weekend. I was actually talking to Tukey Boy and he reckons he was in good form. So I was kind of trying to get a bit more about how the game went, but he just didn't give me too much. But yeah. I reckon the boys, yeah, I, I always back the Suns in and they, are, they can be dangerous, especially at Metricon. So let's see how that goes. I'm, I'm keen for that one. Uh, GWS versus North Melbourne. I have gone for GWS. I think they'll, they'll get the job done against North. Just quickly as well. West Coast versus Gold Coast, that was my absolute certainty. Yeah, I, just, I saw that on the paper. I wasn't yeah. going to pull you up. Yeah, perfect. So GWS versus North Melbourne, you're going GWS? <coughs> yeah, but I, th- yeah, I, sorry, I think, but I actually reckon like after North's first round, they've, they've got a bit of resilience. So you just never know with North. I think they're my sort of smoky team in a way that they could really push a lot of teams this year they're not expected to. I'm predicting that GWS will be hungry as hell after that grand final loss and they would have taken a lot from that because they are still a young club so I think that there will be a massive learning curve for them um, Sydney versus Essendon I've gone for Sydney I think once again a tight game um, SCG home game so I've just gone the Swans with that one massive I think that Sydney are the big movers this year um, mm. I, I reckon that they're such a well managed club they had made the finals in however many years in a row before last year yeah I think that they've still got, you know, a great coach in John Longmire at the helm. For me, they're going to be back up in the top eight this year. St Kilda versus Western Bulldogs. I have gone the Saints as another smoky. Now, I think the Doggies are a better team. They've been rated as uh, should be a top four team this year. Uh, but Saints just, they somehow get it done as well. Uh, so if it's a tight game, I think Saints do have the ticker to be able to kind of pull one out of the bag. So that's a smoky call for me again. I reckon that's one that goes either way as well. But for me, it's it's the doggies. I just think their midfield's too strong. The Bont, Jack McRae, Lockie Hunter, he'll be wanting he'll be wanting to really put on some good performances after a mishap in the off season. So 
Yeah, doggies for me, mate. Lovely. So that was the predictions for this week. And now you got your best on segment. Best on segment. All right, guys, get excited. So this week we've come across another another video. Um, and this is probably, it's not a pep up or a raz. It's probably the biggest wet blanket of a of a pump up that we've had in a while now. Um, just before, I'm just going to give you a little bit. We just can't. We can't. We can't go without without the sting. Yeah. It really makes the podcast. <laughs> the, yeah, production value goes up when the sting goes up. Now, um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go and then we'll review it after. And I have not seen this. No. So. Lay that shepherd taking a hit for your mate. And I'd like to see that this quarter for sure. Come on, boys. Oh, this oh, quarter, boys, oh, I want you to go out there and show them what fire means. <laughs> show, them what we, show them what we mean when we say we're going to bring the thunder down from the skies, yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah, boys. Come on, boys. Yeah. Want to see it, boys? This, this quarter, boys, you've got the wind. Okay, now last time we played with the wind, it was a bit of a nightmare. You kept on kicking it over the top of each other's heads. Remember, you're kicking with the wind. Remember, the ball's coming with the wind. Allow it to come to you. Okay, don't be running under the ball all the time, especially in the forward line. I had to talk to you about that just a moment ago, forwards. When you're delivering it down, you be aware that you can go long. Really, give it a good hoof. Hold the ball up, say I'm going long, and just do it. Don't try and go for goals. Try and land it in the goal square. Talk to each other, boys, and boys, smile. You're going into your last quarter of football. Go on, go on. So, I don't know how he's been stitched up with the coaching role, but he is just not cut out for yeah. it. Yeah, so like I, I said, yeah, he, you, I wouldn't reckon I could fight my way out of wet, my wet paper bag after that one. It just doesn't get me up and about. He now, looks, I tell you what, he looks like a poor man's Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> <laughs> Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool manager. We'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a side-by-side view on that one. Um, what I can only gather is... This has to be a teacher on a Wednesday afternoon with like school sports. Oh, that's the that's only way point. that makes yeah. sense to me because I've watched this and I'm like, well, he's clearly, he can't be a parent. He can't be enthusiastic about the game. Like his instructions were, there's wind, it's going to go along. So not even, he wasn't up and about. He wasn't even instructional really. So that's the only sense I I'll make of this. Allow the ball to come. Yeah. Through. Really give it a big hoof. <laughs> Oh, what a man. <laughs> so that was uh, this week's best on. Mate, you've done well once again. Yep. And without further ado, moving on now, we've got the great man, Lockie Weller, coming on the podcast. Yes. An interview with him and you tell us what you know about him. Yep. So uh, I've had, uh, I've known him briefly just through uh, obviously Tukin being around the Gold Coast. Um, once again, he's a ripping bloke. Um, we wanted to get a lot of stitch ups from him from early days. And I know one of his best friends when he was younger. But he's Mr. Bloody Perfect. So we've got some stitch-ups for him, um, which we'll get him with. But other than that, he's just, a, once again, a really good bloke. He's a, he's a handsome man. He is a handsome <laughs> he's man. He's a very he's handsome a man. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to doing this interview. So um, without further ado, uh, Lockie you guys Weller. enjoy it. Okay, guys. Before we get to our chat with Lockie Weller, we have to shamelessly remind you how important it is to us that you like and subscribe from wherever you're listening or head to our website at www.hallogameday.co to join our weekly mailing list. Your support really means the world to us. All right. So we have Lockie Weller here. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, firstly, a bit of a pump up for yourself. You're a Tassie boy. Uh, you then moved to the Gold Coast when you were 15, played for Southport in the Neeple where you got drafted to Fremantle, pick 13. And then you found yourself back on the Gold Coast. So welcome to the show, mate, and give us a big old hello game day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hello game day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite Benny Crocker, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so obviously we're going to start off with the stitch ups early. <laughs> so the first one, mate, was I heard a bit of a story that you've come across from Fremantle to the Gold Coast. And everyone's had pretty open arms except for David Swallow because apparently when you came to the club, you've knocked him off the pedestal as the best looking bloke at the football club. <laughs> Is that true? Nah. <laughs> all those, they got good genes, the Swallows. Evan Andrews, good. Yeah, they're nah. all good looking boys. <laughs> uh, I think Spitter's more um, flat than I'm playing the midfield this year and he's stuck down forwards. <laughs> <laughs> Stitched up. Spitter, yeah. I love that nickname. <laughs> yeah, have you never heard that? That's no, the nickname, Spitter. Oh, that's hilarious. Mate, but he's, he's a good looking rooster. He's a, his dad's name's Ian, so it's Ice Swallow. Anyway, 
Probably cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's no, Stan. <laughs> that's Stan. That's, that's surely that's PJ. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Mate, what I was getting to before when I was calling you a good-looking rooster, it wasn't for nothing, but apparently when you were a bit younger, you struggled with the girls. Is there any good truth to this? <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I was talking about parents. They were too career-driven. Had to just play footy and that was it. No girls allowed. <laughs> Mum was pretty protective. No, nah, I've never had trouble with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably because you were a state soccer player when you were younger. Is that is that why? <laughs> Where did you talk come from? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> can you talk us through how you claim to be a state soccer player? <laughs> so, not soccer. It was futsal, which is even worse. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, um, anyway, we had like a good group of boys growing up in Burnie. We're all like pretty talented, and like footy. <laughs> was like our main sort of sport. But we one of our teachers was a mad soccer player. So um he got us playing futsal. And we had no skill but we could kick a ball pretty hard. So like we'll always like we'll kick and have goals. Anyway, the Tassie team ended up being like our school team. And um anyway I went we went to the nationals over in Melbourne and um I was like leading goal scorer for the comp. And uh Anyway, I got invited. I was like on the got invited to like this all Australian team that went to America and stuff, but I never did it. So then I just claimed to the boys that I made the Australian team in soccer. Well, what I heard <laughs> was that you've claimed this story and you've called your mum uh, openly in front of the boys that they're on loudspeaker, and she's yeah. denied all of this that you've Apparently just said. Apparently, you never <laughs> even played. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's when she goes. Um, I was saying it was soccer to the boys, so it was soccer. And then she goes, nah, it was futsal. And then they lost it. <laughs> well, we've heard differently. So that was the stitch up we had there. <laughs> Moving on, mate. Know, Apparently, you lost your uh, your passport on a surf trip. What, what, what happened there? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> right. I've organised this whole surf trip. So I'm the main guy that's organising everything. My name, like, I've got everything down. All the hotel rooms are in my name. So I'm like, flat out. Anyway, we leave this hotel in um, Kuala Lumpur. And we're about to fly to a um, little island in Sumatra. And um, anyway, we got, it was probably 45-minute drive out to the airport. And we got there and we lined up. And we are literally next to go in. I was like, all right, get your passports out. And I was like, it's not there. <laughs> I've left it on the um tax. I've left it in the taxi, and um I don't know how, but we're so lucky because we um booked the taxi through the hotel, so the hotel knew who they rang, so we could ring him straight away, and he would have been nearly halfway back, and like we we're probably twenty minutes, not even 20, ten minutes from like closing the gates, so I'm about to miss it. I'm telling Token. Wiggy, you boys go, like, I'll meet you there, like, <laughs> in a couple of days, <laughs> whatever, because there wasn't many flights to this island. <laughs> and um, and I was like, we're on this taxi drive, I was like, mate, I don't care how many speed fines you get, like, I'll give you a big tip, like, just get here as quick as you can. <laughs> yeah. This bloke's rocked up in, like, five minutes, like, he must have <laughs> been blind. <laughs> saw him come up the big, he come, saw him come up the big ramp at the um, airport and he was humming. Anyway, he was a legend. He didn't even want a tip or anything. He wouldn't accept it. And we, we made the flight. Oh, surely you shoved, shoved the tip in his back pocket, mate. I tried to. He wouldn't <laughs> accept it. He was a good fella. Mate, what a good bloke. <laughs> so, mate, that's glad, we're glad that worked out for you. But something that might not have actually worked out for you was I've got a bit of uh, rumour here that after one of the games, the boys have come back and, and had a bit of a social drink. You probably got your eight-day break. We'll just pump it up as that. And you boys are having the hour of power. And from what I know is, you know, you have an hour of drinking before you go out and you give it a bit of a go. Apparently in the hour of power, you've lasted 14 minutes and thrown up. <laughs> Can you confirm? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that wasn't one of my best nights. Um, no, I reckon it was. So we probably got smashed that day. Anyway. <laughs> Go through Macca's drive through on the way back. Just need a hungry jack, but uh, a Big Mac. Yeah. And um, anyway, I smashed it and I was 
pretty bloated. And then we're smacking these drinks. And it was, a, it was the um, Maccas that come up. It definitely wasn't the 40. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's but I'm, ter- I'm a terrible drinker. So, like, you know. Well, funnily enough, you say that because there's another story that uh, has a bit of drinking involved. Now, from <laughs> what I've heard, is it's the end of season festivities. Uh, you boys are having a bit of a crack. I think it's probably second or third day in, and you probably know where I'm going with this. Now, you're at North Burley Surf Club and you're making your way to Nobby's. And You've got great detail in these stories. Mate, I don't, I don't mess about with my stories. I make sure I hit you between the eyes. So what I've heard is, and by the way, anyone who hasn't been on the Gold Coast, the commute from North Burley to Nobby's is probably 150 metres. So what he said to the fellas is, all right, boys, I just quickly need to go home and have a rinse. Um, and from there, <laughs> you haven't shown your face for the rest of the time. So can you please explain? Yeah, I um well yeah, well, a few days in, I haven't been home, haven't showered, nothing. I was like, I need to have a shower. Anyway, I went back and yeah, I never come back. I ended up falling asleep. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't been that one down in a while. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard every time there's a smoke bomb, it's called having a rinse or you've had a good yeah. rinse. <laughs> Gotta have a quick rinse. That's yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, so what I heard was well, as well was that um, the boys knew you weren't coming back because they saw your fiancé picking you up in a car out the front. So they knew you yeah, were smoke yeah. bombing from the get-go. Yeah, I was done. Yeah. The worst thing is that, like, we have this end of season. We go for, like, a week. And then we – so at the end of that week, we go straight to Bali for a week. So we have, yeah, like, it's... two weeks pretty full on. <laughs> yeah, it's so intense. So I need a night off to get me through. <laughs> Fair enough, we'll, we'll give you that. So that's, uh, those are all the stitch-ups. You'd now. be absolutely wrapped to know that we're, uh, we're moving away from the stitch-ups now, mate. <laughs> well, what was yeah. it like growing up just slightly off the mainland in, in Tasmania? Um, yeah, it was good. It was a good little community. Um, everyone knows everyone down there and everything sort of evolved around the, the footy club. So um, we all went to school together and, and then we'll just be with each other on the weekends at, at the footy club and, um, I was pretty lucky. My parents' friends all had kids around the same um, age. So a lot of my friends were, you know, friends of uh, my parents as well. So it was a pretty tight-knit little group. Yeah, beautiful. And, and when did you move to the Gold Coast? Um, I was 15. So Mav was playing up here at the time um, for the Suns. And it was, oh, I was a few years at... Me and Dad were trying to get Mum out of Tassie, and I love to come up here. I, every school holidays, I nearly come up here and um, just stay with Mav, and always want to move up. So yeah, I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> what's that? I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, moved up when I was fifteen. Lovely, and um, we want to obviously get to. Well, I guess you played a bit of footy on the Gold Coast and at Southport. So with that, and uh, and leading into getting drafted to Fremantle, if you want to go through all of that. Yeah, um, yeah. so Southport were kind of claim me at the moment. I only really played one year there, but I had a couple of years at Broad Beach Cats as well yep. um, before I went to Southport. But, yeah, it was a bit different. Like, as you know, it's not a footy state. And um, sort of moved – I went to school, obviously, up here. I was year nine, on the back end of year nine when I started. And um, – the, everyone was talking about school footy and they played in summer because everyone played rugby in winter. And I was like, oh, yeah, pretty keen. Anyway, I rocked up to this, like, to the first game of the season and it was, like, on an Oz kick field with, like, a little Oz kick ball. And, like, I could literally kick a goal from full back. And like, I just come from, like... Because I was 15, I was... I played my first senior game when I was 15. So I was playing with men and, you know, and then... <laughs> And then I just rock up to that and I was like, you're joking, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it took me a while until I sort of um, was involved in the Suns Academy and more the Queensland stuff. I started to see that there was actually people that could play a bit of footy up here, but it was still a fair way off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And obviously um, leading into, I assume the Suns Academy and playing a bit of NEFL footy maybe is what got you drafted to Fremantle? Yeah, so, um, yeah, obviously going through all them sort of pathways and 
um, playing for Queensland and all that. And I um, was lucky enough to be in the um, AOS at the time as well. So um, you obviously around recruiters a lot and lucky enough to get picked up. Yeah. And how'd you find the, uh, the move across? Um, I was pretty ready to move. Obviously, like growing up, I always wanted to play AFL and I was living in Tassie. So I was always going to move. Um, but yeah, like I was with my partner now, um, and I was still with, um, on the Gold Coast, so she had to move over as well, and or we sort of moved away from each other at the start until she came over, but, um, yeah, it was pretty tough, like as an 18 year old, you sort of going away from all your family, and, um, I think I've only been to WA once in my whole life, and didn't really know the place, so, um, but it was a good experience, I'm definitely better for it. Yeah, and did you uh, find anyone that you kind of got pretty close with over there when you moved over? Yeah, so, um, well, Ed Langdon, um, yeah. we moved into a host family together until we got kicked out. And, um, <laughs> Is there any, <laughs> any story behind that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that you... Yeah. Not heaps until um, she uh, came home and she was like, what are the... Um, <laughs> So we had um we just had the top level to ourselves. Yeah. And um she was another lady and whatever and she didn't really like us coming home late at night. And um anyway, we come home, she showed us this wall that would climb up to our balcony to get in. And um she's like, What's with the footprints like up to the balcony? And there was like full just like dirty footprints up this <laughs> like brand new white house all the way up to the um balcony. Because we're climbing up there to get in. Because we we'll, we'd always forget the key and like we'd have yeah. to wake her up to get in. <laughs> and like anyway, so we'd do that. And then there was a few other things that really pissed yeah. <laughs> we, Well, I won't put you on the spot with that too much. Yeah. Another question was: Were there any almighty Ross Lyons sprays that you either copped or you witnessed? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> oh, every day, really. But um. One that would always stick in my mind was um, we are playing the Giants on the weekend and he threw me a question. It was like 24 hours out from the game. And he threw me a question. He's like, how do JWS move their ball outside of D50? And um, I didn't know the answer. Like, I had it written on my book and I, like had to, I was kind of like looking at my book to try and see if I had it on there. But he would he'd pick that up and he'd be like, don't look at your book. You should know. Oh. I was like, oh, well, I was so stuttered a bit. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and then um, he like threw it to the guy that was emergency that week. And he's like, do you know it? Anyway, he nailed it. And I was like, you. <laughs> oh, no. He's grabbed my magnet and threw it on the ground. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. I was 19. And um, anyway, and then after it, so I thought I was dropped. I thought this guy on emergency is coming in. He's he knows how they move the ball out of their <laughs> yeah, I thought that as well. Real, real important. Yeah. And um, so I thought I was done. And then he grabbed me like after it, and um, he's like, "You're lucky. There's 24 hours to go before the game. You need like get your shit sorted, basically." And I was like, "Yeah, I knew it, but like I just couldn't remember when you stepped on the spot." But. Anyway, I rocked up to the game the next day and it was like, we come into the last meeting and he just looked at me and then he was like, I answered, um, he asked the question again and I just nailed it. <laughs> oh, you would have <laughs> well, been a brave. Never that. Yeah. And now I definitely know how they move the ball out day 50 for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate. And was that the main catalyst for you uh, moving over to the Gold Coast or w- was there other reasons? <laughs> Another deal breaker in the end. <laughs> no, nah, um, nah, I just I always wanted to get back here, and um, I wasn't really always waited to sort of the Suns had a you know a better coach and a bit more direction off field and, and stuff like that, and I always wanted to get back here, and that's when they appointed well, they appointed Mark Evans halfway through the year, and um, and then they appointed Stewie Jew at the end of the year. I was just happened to be over here for off season, and um, yeah, I went out for dinner with him and had a fair few beers with him, and I was like, oh, I want this bloke to coach, yeah. coach me. So um, 
yeah, we got it down. It was a pretty stressful time. It come down to like the last thirty seconds or something. So, oh wow, it was pretty heavy. <laughs> I had no idea. So another question we want to ask, um, leading away from that is the all-star game this year. Um, and what was that experience like being amongst, I guess the biggest names in the game and, you know, being around that kind of environment? Um, yeah, it was a pretty special experience. Um, obviously playing with um, a lot of good players in the comp and I felt pretty out of place there uh, for a bit, but um, kind of got comfortable later on. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty special occasion and um, it was a big night. <laughs> was there anyone who you were particularly particularly happy to be playing next to or against, I guess? Um, no one really stood out. Hey, it was kind of just stars everywhere. But um, Brody Grundy was kind of one that I was kind of looking forward to playing with. And um, yeah, I saw the way he went about it. It's pretty good. He's a good player. Lovely. And now moving to uh, your, well, not so recent, but it is still recent engagement. Can you talk us through that and how you uh, popped the question? Um, yeah, so it was last year um, in the buy round. We, um, we just went down to Byron Bay and got an Airbnb. We were actually on a farm. Um, so I'm not one that, to really do it in public at all. So yeah. I wanted to win. Big farm, no one was around. Um, but yeah, it was just a sunset and jumped down on one knee. So yeah, I was pretty lucky with the ring because actually two came with me um, the day before. I've got a mate that um, his mum owns a jewellery shop. So I went in and showed a photo of um, what I was thinking and they whipped it up in that day just for me. It normally takes a few weeks to get. So um, I was pretty lucky. And then, um, yeah, got it all done in the day. <laughs> was she expecting it at all or was it very unexpected? No, it was actually really unexpected. We, like, we spoke about it. It was kind of like, I always wanted to have um, kids early. I wanted to be like a young dad. Um, but she was always like, well, you're not getting that until... <laughs> you put a ring on it so, yeah i was like well i better hurry up and do it then <laughs> as said by the one by the great prophet beyonce if you like it you put a ring on it uh moving on mate just one last question to round things up now i like to ask people who have played at multiple clubs who are the best who is the best forward midfielder and defender you've ever played with well best midfielder would be Fifey, um, he's a freak. Um, and then forward, geez, Sonny Walters was good when he was up and going. Um, even like Hayden Ballantyne, he was just really good to play with. Yeah. Um, he was good to have on your team more than someone you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, best backman. Oh, you just hate them guys that just like don't leave you alone. Yeah, <laughs> you like the you like the backmen that kind of like play off here and sort of zone you a little bit. But Cam Sutcliffe was terrible from Freeman. Oh, he's I think he's still at Port Adelaide now. But um, yeah, he would just like wear you like a glove. Yeah. And like I was pretty young, like obviously nineteen at Freo, and he would just bump a bar me and just like. Wouldn't give me anything. <laughs> Used to hate playing up against him. Awesome, mate. Well, we really appreciate you coming on, brother, and uh, giving us a chop out and giving us a good Hello Game Day at the start there. I hope everyone's enjoyed the interview. Thanks for having me, boys. Good Cheers, big boy. Thank you, brother. So that was our interview with Lockie Weller. What a man. What a great blog. Yeah, uh, the stitch ups went well. <laughs> Very happy with it. So, no, nah, it was just, once again, good to have a, a bloke come on and give us his time. And I really appreciate it once again, Lockie. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Well, hopefully next time we're up in the Gold Coast, we can uh, all get together and two meter Peter and Tukey can cook for us some of those beautiful... Uh, whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of good meals and yeah, maybe have a, have a rinse. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, beautiful. Anyways, guys, if, wherever you're watching this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you need to. I've been the Moose. I have been the Ponch. And next time you tune in, bring a mate. Thank you for tuning in to the Hello Game Day podcast. If you're listening right now, that means you've made it to the end of the episode and maybe even enjoyed what you've heard. If so, you can join us on all major social media platforms as well as audio podcasting platforms and YouTube. Or just head on over to our website at www.hellogameday.co and hit subscribe to join our mailing list where you can receive weekly updates on the podcast. We'd like to give a massive thank you to our producer, Ethan Curtin. Find him on Instagram at Room10Company, as well as Equal Tech, who have given us an office space to work in. And our beautiful graphic design is done by Chev at Graphic Design. He's been the punch. He's been the moose. And next time you drop in, bring a mate.